Hi, welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, um, I thought I'd start with making some ROM chips, some basic ROMs for the Commodore 64 longboard. Um, so what I've got is these little adapter boards. These convert from the original 2364 to a 2764. So the 2764 is the same as this EEPROM, which is a 27256. So I've checked out on the pinouts, um, I'll pop some pictures up and let you have a look at them. Um, and they're pretty much identical. So what I'm going to do is use these adapter boards and create a kernel ROM for the long board. So what I noticed when I started putting this together is that You've got to put these pins in. Yeah, it's got a little socket in the bottom of here at the moment. It doesn't need it. I'm just holding it in there for them pins at the moment to try and keep them straight for this top board so they're straight when they go back into the 64. So what I'm going to do is solder that roll first. And the reason why I'm going to do that is, is because when we put the socket on, we can't get into them. And if I solder these up and solder these up, when I turn it over inside there, when I'm trying to solder the socket on, I, I won't be able to get to the pins very easy at all. So what I'm um, going to do is solder this row up first, then I'm going to put that socket on. I don't really need to put a socket on, I could just put that straight onto that board. But for playing around and working it out, stuff like that, I'm going to build it this way. So like I said, I'm going to solder that row up, I'm going to put the socket on, solder the socket rows in, and then I'm going to put this pin in here. These pins are back in this side and roll, finally solder this row up here. And that should be pretty much just done. So I'm just going to go ahead now and get them soldered up if the soldering irons uh, decided to walk, wake up yet. we will have a quick look and see whether this is done. Yep, we're melting on the end of there, so that's good. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of light around because my old eyes are not brilliant. I'll just scope in a little bit for you so you can see. So this is the row down this side that I'm going to solder in first. So I'm just, all I'm going to do is take a little bit of flux. A little bit of liquid flux. This is what I use. No clean stuff. Although I do clean it. And we're just going to blather that down that side there. Make sure it's got plenty of flux on there. So that should be that. I'm just going to fire away now. And get soldering these pins on. So yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put the socket on now. That's all I'm going to do is pull this back off this board. Not like that. So you can see the, oops, you can see the difficulty now. Look, so if I put this board on top of there, it's gone in up. So it holds it off slightly as well. There's not much you can do about that. But you can see now if I'd have soldered them other pin if I'd have soldered them other pins in, look. They'd have been so awkward to get in with soldering iron this way to get to these pins. So I'm gonna do these pins and do these pins, and I'm gonna put it back in that little adapter, and then I'm gonna solder these one up for last. That's should be pretty much the adapter plate done. So I'm just gonna do that now.
it's quite difficult as you can see some people don't like people soldering this way but I find it the easiest way and sometimes if that works for you go with it there you go that's all them soldered now We go back to on this side and this should be a lot easier we should be able to get through this a lot quicker this side so that's that side done that looks nice and neat and soldered we're just going to pop that side back on now the one that we took off um, flip it around loads it's a bit tight in there look you can you see it I'm just going to push them down it should go in it went in a lot easier than this last time We'll try for that side first then. So socket should be more forgiving. Yeah, there we go, look. So again, we've got a little difficult side to go down. So I'm just gonna do that same process again when I'm dipping a little bit of solder on the iron and just touching it to the pad. Just clean the iron off. Let's have a little bit more flux. Difficult soldering down this side. Um, uh, do it a different way than if I can. So it looks pretty snotty, doesn't it? Well, it is, to be fair. I'm going to clean that up now. So that should be that. See, looks nice now, doesn't it? So in theory, I'm going to pull this socket off the bottom now. That comes out. And we've got our ROM adapter. The next trick is to see whether we can get a ROM burnt into this EEPROM. And we'll uh, check it out and see whether it worked or not. So I'll see you over at the PC. So here we are back over at the EEPROM burner on the PC. I've put the chip in there. There's 27256 EEPROM. So I'll pop that inside there. This is a 32K EEPROM. So what I had to do is I took the, this one that I've got, you can't see it now. But I took the, the um, kernel ROM and loaded it into the, uh, and if you look at, if I, if I bring this properties up of this kernel ROM look and fetch it over, you can see it's only 8K. So what I did is I opened it up, find it on my desktop. Where have you gone? Where are you? There we go, look, there's 8 and the 32. I've already made that one look, so I'm just going to show you. I'm going to load that one. Yep, in you go. So you can see we've got that kernel ROM loaded up, but these reside in four places. So if we go down here, we can see these numbers on the on the, the blue numbers on the left hand side. We scroll right down, and if once you get to two thousand, which is one thousand A B C D E F, we'll come up to two thousand here where it's stopped. Look, you can see that we're full of F's again, aren't we? Yeah. So what I've done is I've copied and pasted all that lot into 2000. So I highlighted them all up and right click and pasted it in. I went down to 4000, did the same thing again. Went down to 6000, get down to 4000, look. 
In fact, what I'll do is I'll load up that other ROM that we've got in here, wherever it is. Where is it? The 32. This is the one. So look, we're still here, look, I'm going to go down to 4000 now. Four thousand, four thousand, four thousand. So you can see that's where the other one ended when I copied and pasted it in because there's your FF look finish. R R B Y C there look. So we'll look at that again. So then they proceeded and I copied and pasted it again from four thousand to six thousand. Six thousand. There's your R R B Y C look. And the FF there, that's the end of it again. And then I copied and pasted it in at the end of this one. Which would take us all the way down to finish off at 8000, which is 7FF0, which you can see there, look, it's ended. So all I've done is timed it by 4, copied and pasted it into there. I've gone to my device, I've gone to program, which I've already done in this EEPROM programmer. I'll show you that what I've just done there, look, I'll verify it, because I've just burnt it. So I'll verify that, look. What? Check the, check the check ID sum off and then do it again. Verify. Verify. So that's verified that, that I've just loaded in there that I showed you I created. All I did is I copied them all, pasted it in, went to save, saved it. So then I've got my own 32 bin file. 32k bin file, which I can use at any time I want. So I'm hoping that's going to work right. I'm, to be fair with you, it's the first time I've done that kind of thing, doubling them up. Um, so I'm going to take that out of that, plug it into the Commodore, and we'll see if it switches on. So here we are over at the Commodore 64. This is my daily driver. As you can see, it's flashing away there nicely. If I just flick the switch off and flick the switch on the back, and switch back on. You should be able to see Jiffy Dots at the top of the screen there. So that's his kernel. So this 64, we'll just pan you down. So this is my daily driver. This is what I use all the time. This is my favourite one. And as you can see in there, we've got Jiffy Dots on the switch here, so we can switch between the kernels. So the middle one out of these short three is the kernel so I'm just going to switch that off now switch it back on just to double check yep we're back into Commodore mode the Jiffy DOS is disabled so what I'm going to do is now I've put that little chip that we burnt in the EEPROM burner into its caddy so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull out the Jiffy DOS um, put in this EEPROM and let's see if it works so that's the EEPROM that we've just built in there now which banners up to the telly let's see if it works as I said to you before guys, this is the first time I've made a kernel like this with one of these adapter boards for the 64, so let's see if that works. Yay! Success! I'm more than happy with that, that's good stuff. This also adapter plates will also work for the kernel in the 1541 as well. So if you wanted to do Jiffy DOS, you can do. Um, the, the cable select side of things is where you would attach your on and off switch. So you can switch between kernels. Uh, I dare say that if I put... Um, the, I mean, we started off at the beginning <clears throat> with this kernel. And we'd put another one at 2000 and one another one at 4000. So I would have said the other half of the chip would start at 4000. So if I actually put Jiffy DOS from 4000 and then right through to the end, um, then you should be able to put a switch onto the CS pin, which should be cable select. Um, 
that should be able to switch between the two kernels. So I'm happy with that. I just wanted to create this little um, kernel because I do a lot of testing with these units. I'm going to have a look and see um, about doing the character one as well. Mining this one's there all soldered in. So I won't be, doing, I won't be testing it in this one for the kernels. Not the kernels, sorry, the characters. So I'm going to have a go with the character and the um, basic ROMs as well. What I eventually want to do is I want to create a 64 with pretty much new EPROMs or FPGA chips, etc. Just so it sort of makes it bulletproof um, for, the, for the future. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode from 8-Bit Retro Refix. And I hope you haven't learned a lot. If you've got any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Um, we'll see you in the uh, next episode. Thank you. Bye.